and it's another edition of NFT 101 presented by BitMart. We are counting down. Well, I think at this point we have the we're recording this before the drop of the NFT marketplace, but we're so excited. We're giving you a little bit of a pre post game show talking about NFT culture, all things NFTs that we always do here on NFT 101. But it is a second edition of the BitMart Brain Trust. I am obviously Matt Ryan, but I'm joined as always by the BitMart Brain Trust. Nathan Simone and Kalichi eBay. Guys, how are you doing? Nathan, what's going on, my friend? Man, I'm so glad that we formed this brain trust because as I was explaining to Kalichi before the show, I only know what I know by talking to other people, right? You can't be intelligent in a vacuum, at least I don't think so. <laughs> Kalichi, your thoughts? Yeah, I'm the same way. Um, the same way. I, I learn by just like talking talking to people smarter than me about this stuff. I mean, that's the only way you can learn. Um I mean, of course, you know, you can read articles and you can follow the news, but, you know, by talking to other people, you learn things, you learn events, you learn about other things going on in the, in the, in the industry. So, yeah, I'm the same way. Well, you can get the news the right way uh, by, you know, rate, review, and subscribe to NFT 101. And then you can listen to the non-fungible news every day. But if you like crypto news, you can subscribe to Nathan's feed, The Crypto Conversations. That drops Monday through Friday. But gentlemen, cheap plugs aside, the NFT culture is in a weird period right now. We we made some conver- we made some allusions to it last week when we were talking about Seth Green and a little bit of the concept of NFT security and NFT insurance. But famous people and NFTs, every time something big in the cultural zeitgeist, especially since the advent of the modern internet, we have seen celebrities get involved. We have seen people such as Madonna get involved. We're actually going to be speaking on an edition of NFT 101 next week with someone from Julian's Auction House to talk about Ringo Starr's upcoming NFT drop. You know, the, every major celebrity or brand seemed to either be getting into or looking into the NFT space. We just had VCon a couple of weeks ago in Minneapolis. We talked about that on the non-fungible news. Uh, Gary Vaynerchuk basically renting out the Minnesota Vikings stadium to have an NFT convention. Kalichi, as someone who's been a part of the NFT scene for a while, what are your thoughts on some of these celebrity projects, some of the people who might be looking at this a bit like a vulture picking the bones. You know, we've, we see that in every, you know, every line of work, every kind of piece of business. We've definitely seen it in the crypto industry, but what's your take on that coming to the world of NFTs and have you yourself peaked at any celebrity NFT projects yet and said, ah, I'll take that for a ride. Uh, I've not, no, I've not been involved in any, uh, celebrity NFT project per se. Um, I guess the closest one I would say is um, Snoop Dogg's um, son, um, um, Champ uh, Medici. Um, I think he did something with uh, Clay Nation. Uh, it's a uh, it's a project in Cardano, uh, and you know you could you could buy the NFTs you know in the in the JPEG store. I think it's called yeah JPEG store. But yeah, that's the closest I've been to a celebrity NFT. Uh, wait, actually. Actually, that's not true. I actually bought one NFT from what's the name? Uh, is it Britney Spears or Paris Hilton. Hilton? Yes, she had this this you know collection one time. I just I just paid some some money and I can't even remember the wallet where, where I stored it. But uh, but so yeah, wait, you, you don't even have it anymore. I have it, but it's just in a, my, one of my MetaMask wallets, just you know, in limbo. Um, I, I I need to check it. Maybe maybe it's gone up to like one ETH or ten ETH. <laughs> I might want to check on that one. Yeah, might want to check on that one just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, celebrities are just you know all over NFTs right now, and uh, it's for good reason. Uh, it's just uh, it's it's the, it's, the, it's one of the the best ways where like um, they they're gonna be able to to connect with their fans um true true nfts so really exciting to see um you know these celebrities coming on board well if you think about it kalichi what we were talking about last week is like we kind of joked that if you want to have like a 
a more philosophical or maybe like hippie-ish view of the world that's still correct, right? Is that every person is a unique person. We are all NFTs uh, to some degree, <laughs> organic NFTs. But seriously, when you get into celebrities, right, the whole point about being a celebrity, right, is that there's only one John Cusack. There's only one Kanye West. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Why was the first celebrity to come to your mind, John Cusack? I love John Cusack. Gross Point Blank is a movie that is in my artillery often. But are you like friends with John Cusack? Like, wh why John Cusack? <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe I was watching Say Anything last night, got a little teary, and I, you know, I my boombox was uh, running out of D batteries, so I went to the dollar store. Oh, okay, and, and now, now you're now you're using. I, I get it from the movie, but now we're just regressing backwards in time in terms of technology. First, we're talking about NFTs. Now we're talking about boomboxes. <laughs> boomboxes have made a comeback. Maybe you should go to Best Buy every once in a while. They got Bluetooth in them. They've got all this sort of stuff. <laughs> uh, but uh, we're digressing from my main point here. Actually, the reason that uh, that John Cusack came to mind was one. I did recently watch a movie with him. It wasn't say anything. Unfortunately, I can't actually remember what it was. Um, but the reason why it came to mind was I first thought of Kanye West because Kanye West is one of the few celebrities who has said he won't do NFTs. So there's actually this very interesting rift in the celebrity culture, I guess, if you'd want to say, where some people say that they don't like NFTs. And I don't know whether it's because they just don't like hopping on trends in general or whether they don't understand the tech or they don't think that it's safe. But Kanye West yeah. has said he won't do NFTs at all, which obviously – could make him significant amounts of money. But the reason why most celebrities, I think, do it is going back to what Kalichi said, where you're a celebrity. The whole point is there's only one of you. You have a fan base. And the way to sell authenticated merchandise to a fan base or authenticated items in some way, the best way to do that now is through blockchain tech. There's literally no way to scam or to get around it because it's in, it's auditable. And to, to go right. off of your point real quick, Nathan, I'm sorry, Kalichi, but... Kanye West and NFTs, it's interesting because he was selling his latest album, Donda 2, through a specific type of audio player that is all, you, the only way you can listen to that album, and I believe some of his music going forward, is through that specific type of digital audio player. And I would think someone like a Kanye West would want to give his audience that level of utility or that level of autonomy or ownership of his content because that's always kind of been Kanye, whether you love Kanye or hate him, uh, he's always been about moving forward in terms of technology, in terms of taking the next step forward in, in a creative evolution. It just seems to me that would be the next logical leap for someone like Kanye, especially off of what he did for Donda too. But Kalichi, if you had a point, please go ahead. No, I was just going to say uh, like Kanye like seems to be, like a contrarian like if he sees i get the feeling like if he sees like a lot of people doing something he kind of wants to do the, the opposite of that so you know seeing a lot of celebrities you know you know jumping into the the nfc train uh he i mean he kind of wants to do his own thing like that's that's kanye like <laughs> he likes doing his own thing right uh completely different from everybody else but uh nfts it's not going anywhere um, eventually, I mean, he will have to like come on board because this train is not stopping. Yeah. yeah I, oh, go I, ahead. I, I really, go ahead. I, I really don't know. I mean, I, I personally am a Kanye West fan from way back. I don't think I've listened to any of his newer stuff in the last um, couple of years. I know that he has a lot of personal problems, so I'm not going to speculate on how or why he makes his decisions. Um, but yeah, it does seem odd that Kanye West of all people would not want to get in the NFT game because it actually seems like maybe a couple of years ago when nobody knew that, about NFTs, he would have been like the first one to right. get in. So I don't but, know. I'm, I'm not going to try and speculate on what his thoughts are on that. Just he is an innovative and creative musical artist. You know, that's what I'm 100 percent on. Right. That's that's what makes it even more shocking. Right. He's the. Like he, there was a video um, he did with, um, I think it's uh, like with um, Charlemagne the God, um, like an interview, mm -hmm. and he, like he was, he was one of the celebrities that that talked the first, like mentioned, not, I'm, I'm not saying he's the first, but to just like endorse Bitcoin, you know, um, so for him to not, you know, embrace NFTs is a little bit, you know, disappointing, I guess, but. Well, we saw Madonna drop an NFT recently with Beeple, who 
coming in and out of this was selling the richest NFT in history and then got his stuff hacked on social. So it was it's it's the best of times, it's the blurst of times for <laughs> for Kanye uh, for Madonna for people, but when it comes to this Madonna drop Always controversial with Madonna, always something to get people talking. We talked about it on the non-fungible news. But what we didn't talk about is that it really didn't work. I don't think Madonna's audience, Madonna's generational crossover reaches the NFT space. I think if Lady Gaga did it or someone a little bit more contemporary in the space, it would work. But do you think that... That matters because I I saw an NFT drop recently that is ostensibly still frames of recolored like Tony Bennett concerts and the Judy Garland show and the prices for some of these pieces were several thousand dollars, twenty five thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars for what ostensibly are still frame NFTs, no real utility, no real ownership or real clear understanding of the marketplace. Is this the real feast or famine when it comes to NFTs? People just trying to either stay relevant in the space or try to find new, you know, Madonna's always constantly evolving. Is that what we're seeing here? Or is this just people not truly understanding the NFT concept? Nathan, you want to take that? I mean, that that is a really good question. Uh, I'm going to think on that for one second, if Kalichi, if you've got an answer to that. Yeah, I think a lot of people are just like right now, just jumping into NFTs without really understanding what it is. Um, You know, it's obviously when a celebrity like launches an NFT, you know, it automatically is going to be like premium. Everybody will want to be the first to, to own it because, you know, they're a celebrity. So the value, it's going to, it's going to be valuable, but like Matt was saying, like, what's the, like, what's, what makes it special? What makes it like unique, you know, besides just it's tied to a celebrity and like, is there utility? Um, is there like some like historical, like significance to the, to the piece, right? It's not enough to just say, Oh, a celebrity like launched something, you know, you know, it has to have some kind of intrinsic value or benefit to it. Um, for example, um, you know, if 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 a if a celebrity launches a like an NFT and it gives you like access to like maybe a concert or uh, some some form of like uh, utility, um, that will be valuable. A lot of people will want to have it. Say, for example, Snoop Dogg has an NFT and. And by owning the NFT, like you get to do like a one-on-one video conference with Snoop Dogg to ask him any question, you know, like something like that. Like that would be valuable because that's that's you connecting with a celebrity through ownership of the NFT. So everybody will want to have like own one of them. And the beauty about NFT is now that you own it, you can actually sell it. You can actually transfer that ownership to someone mm-hmm. else that wants it. You know, so it's it's that you know I guess flexibility that makes it so powerful to where again to anybody anybody in the world despite the geographical area could just you can just transfer the ownership to that person. Meanwhile, in the centralized you know I guess um, sphere, it's like login and passwords. Like now I have to share you know in order to transfer that ownership, I have to literally sh- like share my password with you, but. With blockchain technology, you don't have to even deal with password or login. You just you just sell it and boom, that's um, ownership and everything that comes along with it just goes to the other person. You know, easy. Yeah, and it, it's weird because we alluded to at the beginning of this episode that we're in this weird middle gray space with the NFT market and how NFTs are perceived. And to kind of go off what Matt was saying about how Madonna releases NFTs, but maybe they didn't really hit because perhaps... Uh, you know, her rise to fame and her cultural relevance was really 1980s, maybe early 1990s. And those people, particularly Generation X, may not still be into crypto or NFTs. And that, I think, is partially true. But then to hop off of what Kalichi is saying here, uh, I can't remember what news article I was reading, but the Vatican is going to be releasing NFTs. And whether or not you're religious, Catholic, whatever, the Vatican is 2,000 years old. So it's much more, much older than Madonna. I don't know what the Vatican NFTs are supposed to be for. I don't think that they were for utility. They're probably for artistic purposes. But you have this like 
like it, you think about it like a like a stew or a gumbo of all these things that NFTs are supposed to do. And I think we're really in a moment where a lot of people are just waiting to see what rises to the top. They kind of know that the underlying foundation is art that's been proven. But to a lot of people, the art case is just like they don't care about it because maybe they didn't like art in the first place. And now with people like Mark Cuban or like I said, the project I was talking to Everscale, when you when you see the utility and the easiest utility to think of is like a ticket, like a ticket to an event or a concert or something like that. Right. That's just it's one of one. Once people understand that and it goes through its logical progressions of all the stuff that NFTs could potentially do, as long as you have the correct network and it doesn't go down like Solana or other <laughs> networks, um, the sky is really the limit. But we're in that middle period where people are still just like, what the heck is going on with NFTs? I thought that they were art. Now people are telling me they're like a key to a house or a Zoom conference with Snoop Dogg. What are they? And really, they're all of that. And, yeah. I, and I'm sorry, Kalichi, but I think that's still one of the major problems that NFT, you know, the people who don't like NFTs, the NFT hesitant people are going to always harp on and it's going to be that long adoption and adaption process to our everyday life. Like we were talking about Snoop Dogg a moment ago. He bought bet. He bought death row records. He bought the rights to death row records and is looking to turn that into an NFT based uh, you know, record company. And we're seeing a lot of new startups coming out of the music space. Pharrell Williams is starting one. We talked about one on NFM this week that's, you know, focusing on the growth and development of artists in Africa. And you see that as the utility of it. You see it basically as ownership, as stock, as rights, like this, this individual transaction. And when you sell it like that, it makes sense. You're basically selling digital contracts, digital ownership. The rights are there. They're hard rights, but they come through a digital form, which I think scares a lot of people. Like when you take a look at the rise of online banking and their hesitance to that for a very long time. Like we're, we're we are all a generation that kind of got acclimated into all of this. So people a little right. bit older, you know, not our parents age, but like if you have an older brother or someone who's kind of like half a generation older than you, they're automatically going to look at this like they, you're the dog that was shown a card trick. They're not going to know what had to make heads or tails of the damn thing. But I, I think that if you so if it started out as smart contracts, as digital ownership, it would be a lot less murky than the the art space, because the art space has the the art space has a gatekeeping aspect to it it's it's predicated on money it's predicated on worth it's predicated on all of these different financial aspects that make it hard for people who don't live a certain lifestyle to really get involved with it and i think that's some of the issues we're seeing now with the nft market kind of taking a hit is a lot of people who got in over their heads find themselves in this situation where this is how the actual art world works. And I think that's some of the problems that we've run into. But Kalichi, you were making a point before I started rambling. No, I mean, it's, again, this, the, the, the industry, the industry is so new. Um, um, and it's, it seems like everybody is just, everybody's just trying to figure it out. Everybody's trying to find use cases to, to apply to your NFTs, whether that be music, you know, whether it be gaming or, you know, anything else like music, like tickets and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those things where um, education is going to play a critical role. Um, like the VCon event, like learn how, like use cases of how NFT can play a role um, in the world. Um, I was just, just thinking out like, like top of my head, some, some use cases um, is if you can, if you can prove ownership or something, for example, like Snoop Dogg with a dead row record, um, and that stuff is very valuable. Um, you know, he can easily um, use that. Like that's an asset that he owns. He can use that. He can use that as a loan, like a uh, for collateral to get to get money. You know, you cannot do that right now. I don't think you know to have your record label or and use it to to get a loan. Um, but in this case, you know. In a crypto world, you know, in the decentralized world, there will be people who can like give you money, you know, use that as a collateral 
because it's verified that you own that thing uh, and give you give give you money for it, knowing that okay, Snoop Dogg owns this, you know, it's verified that he owns this, and I can trust that, you know. If I give if I give the money out and you know he doesn't pay back, now I own the debt row records. So there's a lot of use cases to this thing. And um yeah, we just uh just exploring and trying to figure out, you know, how we can apply it in our everyday lives. Koichi, I've I've got a secret, and that is that right now I'm the owner of Death Row Records <laughs> that Snoop Dogg is negotiating with. <laughs> Just look at it. Look at it there on the blockchain. It's I'm not lying. I wouldn't lie to you. Then Nathan, you need to get us one you need to get us death row chains. Like I, I don't know why you're not right now wearing the red sug knight suit, you know, <laughs> holding holding, you know, vanilla ice over a windowsill. Like wh- why is that? Why am I not seeing that now? It is my birthday in a month. I need to see that. That needs to be my birthday present from Bitmart is Nathan dressed up like Suge Knight. Well, I, I was uh, trying to send the transaction over ETH, and right now I'm just waiting for it to confirm. So it's just this this whole problem with the gas fees were too high, and I set it lower, and it hasn't failed, but it also hasn't gone through. And so, you know, it ain't nothing but a G thing. But it's, it's hey, it's whatever. So <laughs> what Kalichi was about to go into is something that we probably want to save for the next episode, which is DeFi, because if you think that regular finance is hard to understand – Definance will blow your mind because it adds layers and layers and layers to it. In some ways, it makes it phenomenally simple because it removes a lot of gatekeepers. But I'm going to give you a word to look up, boys and girls, and that word is called rehypothecation. What is rehypothecation? <laughs> if you if you understand that, you'll understand one of the main problems with DeFi and why there's going to be many 2008 level collapses within the DeFi network, but hopefully nothing that will collapse the entire thing. But I, I, I do want to comment here on a point that Matt made before I uh, pronounced myself the king of death row records <laughs> that, uh, yeah, perhaps the art world was the wrong place for the NFT, you know, kind of craze to start because the art world is literally abstract now. Like <clears throat> since postmodern art, it's pe- lots of people don't get art. I've been to plenty of art museums in uh, Colorado, Georgia, other places where I can see people walking around and they're just like, what is this? My five-year-old child could get this. So art is already out of the hands of a lot of people and they feel like it's abstract. It's like there have literally been books written about how, you know, uh, rich people use it to avoid taxes. And it's kind of like a, it's a different asset class. But in a way, the art world and high tech um, can be similarly complicated and gatekeeping. And so maybe it actually was kind of like a natural marriage that a technology like Ethereum or Bitcoin or the things that helped develop NFTs and smart contracts were sufficiently complicated enough that only people that had significant capital and access to intelligent people started utilizing them, AKA the art world. So I don't know, it's democratized since then, but it does seem like it was both the natural step and a step that most people were not going to, to get into, but it's progressed so much more since then. I'm glad you mentioned DeFi with NFTs. Um, That's one of another use case where I think NFTs can be used in a way. Um, Obviously, you know, going with the first example of, you know, using an NFT as a, um, like kind of a collateral, um, to get a loan. Actually, um, I know a few projects that are currently working on this right now. Uh, one of them is called like hi fi, um, um, high fidelity finance. Um, it's on the Ethereum network. Um, but I know, I think they're on Polygon, but they're going to go, they're going to switch to uh, the ETH network, but essentially what they're going to be doing is, you know, basically giving you fixed rates um, like loans with your NFT collection. So if you have a board ape, if you have a, a crypto punk, you know, you can lock it into a smart contract, right? And you can actually like get a loan, get a like a US like a stable coin loan out of the, you know, without giving up your your board ape. Because the market has already said this thing is valuable, right? They've put the price on it that it's valuable. Everybody knows it. Everybody knows the brand. And that's why branding is such a huge part of nfts like if you have a solid brand it could it could hold that value of your uh, of your nft so that way you don't get liquidated right if the price like drops significantly but there'll be a lot of people who 
don't want to get like like uh, let go of the NFTs, but they want to like make, like have some liquidity. They don't have um, liquidity to do all all kind of things, all kinds of things. You know, to buy more crypto, you know, to even buy a car or do whatever, like pay pay um, like a credit card debt or whatever. So I think again, going back to the you know the, how powerful this whole NFT thing could be. It's not just you know just a random art you know it's the utility that you can you can get from it you know um, so uh, DeFi is one of those um, uh, huge use cases and another use case when it comes to DeFi that I always I'm very very passionate about is if I own an NFT for example say Uniswap you know we, know, we all know Uniswap right one of the biggest you know DEXs on on the Ethereum network or you know if they have an nft right and you own an nft you know from the uniswap you know team and as part of owning the nft i get like a gas fee reimbursement you know for using the dex now think about this from a competitive standpoint what if a like a uniswap competitor has they have like a nft set and i say hey look if you own our nft and you use our dex like you get like gas fee reimbursement. I think that will, a lot of people will flock to that network and say, I need to own this NFT and I'm not going to sell the NFT because I want to get paid back my gas fees. And if you want to, if you want to, um, if you want to not pay gas fees, hey, I have an NFT I could sell you so that way you cannot. So it brings that value to the NFTs, right? So there's so much like gamification, so much like game theory that you can apply with this whole thing. Um, you know, just, yeah, the sky's the limit. You just have to be creative about it. And I think we're going to leave it there. Next week, we'll be talking more about this stuff. We'll be talking about deification. We'll be talking about the word that uh, the, that Nathan said that broke my brain a little bit. Uh, yeah, Dehypothesizing. You, 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 you said deification. What 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 Matt meant was defi. Defi. Okay, see, he's my brain tired. broke. Yeah, the conversation he's, he's broke working. my brain. The, but, the word that I said, which you can look up on Investopedia, is called rehypothecation. Rehypothecation. And you you will understand it if you look up the 2008 the, financial crisis. In a right. nutshell, it is using one collateral, one collateralized asset that you already have to get a loan for another collateralized asset. Essentially, setting up financial dominoes. It's very, very easy to do in DeFi, and nobody talks about it. So, right. well, well, we will next week right here on the Bitmart Brain Trust for Kalichi uh, eBay. Kalichi eBay. There we go. I'm getting it right. I'm I'm <laughs> stupid, but I'm pretty. And he owns the site. He owns the site. I own Death Row Records, and he owns eBay. That's why he can just sit around to do these conversations. Oh yeah, I, but, I get that all the time. <laughs> but for Kalichi eBay and Nathan Simone, I'm Matt Ryan. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Bitmart Brain Trust. If you have not already, rate, review, and subscribe to NFT 101 and the Crypto Conversations wherever you like audio, wherever you stream audio. And if you're watching the video version of this and you're seeing how handsome we are, please like, comment, and subscribe and ring the notification bell so you know when we're dropping new episodes of NFT 101 and other great content here on BitMart's YouTube channel and across the BitMart podcast network. We'll see you next week right here on NFT 101 and the BitMart Brain Trust. Hey, Nathan here from BitMart. Hope you liked that conversation. I know that I always do. It's great learning more about crypto and kind of putting a face behind all the technical jargon. But that's not the last thing we have to do. We've got to get some legal stuff out of the way. And so here it goes. All opinions and actions expressed and undertaken by the hosts and guests are individual opinions and actions and do not reflect the views and actions of BitMart. BitMart does not guarantee the accuracy, applicability, reliability, integrity, performance, completeness, or appropriateness of this content. The value of digital currencies can go up or down, and there can be a substantial risk in buying, selling, holding, or investing in digital currencies. You should carefully consider whether trading or holding digital currencies is suitable for you based on your personal investment objectives, financial circumstances, and risk tolerance. BitMart does not provide investment, tax, or legal advice. Use of BitMart services is entirely at your own risk.